Good morning, Jay Hi, Reverend Seth here, and I'm excited that you join us this morning. We are going to have a fantastic time as we continue our series, God, Guys, and Girls. And we have an interesting topic for this morning. It is the topic of dating. Wow, a couple of your eyebrows raised there. I know we're going to be talking about dating. Now, here's the thing. A lot of people might wonder why we're talking about dating in J.I., but that's about the time that you start to get interested in those kind of things. I bet you there's some of you out there that are in a dating relationship already. You have a boyfriend or girlfriend, and so this is going to be really important for you. But I bet you there's a group of you out there that are really interested in having a boyfriend or girlfriend, even if you don't right now, and you need to pay attention. We're going to give you some great information. Now, some of you you might not be interested in dating at all, and that is perfectly fine. But please pay attention because there's still some truth that when you get to that point, and it's coming soon, when you're going to start to be interested in that. Now, some of you out there might be in that position where mom or dad has said no dating until you're 30 years old. And that's fine too. We're going to respect your parents' wishes. But the information that we're going to cover in today's uh, message is incredibly important for anyone because of relationships and how important relationships are to God. And you know what? The Bible doesn't talk necessarily a lot about dating. Now, we learned last week the Bible has a lot to say about the difference between love and lust, but it doesn't talk about relationships and dating as much as it does relationships in general. But that's okay because God still gives us some clear cut ways that we're supposed to handle our relationships. And so we're going to go through that today. And uh, the first thing I'm going to give you is, is maybe what we would call God's dating rules. Number one, honor and respect. The Bible says in Romans 12, 10, love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. Right there. You were supposed to honor people. Philippians 2, 3 through 4 says this, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of other. That's so important in a dating relationship, is to think about the other person in the relationship, their interests, their desires, what's going on in their life, and how can you help that. That's what love is. Remember, love is selfish, selfless. All right. So number two, number two, we want to be equally yoked, equally yoked. Second Corinthians 6, 14 through 15 says this, do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony is there between Christ and Belial? Or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? Now, I know that when you're in that dating relationship, you're not thinking maybe right off the bat how deep of a relationship that person has with God. But let me tell you, wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. The Bible says do not be unequally yoked because their life if they're not a Christian or a believer, might be going in this direction. And your life as a Christian and believer trying to grow closer to God might be going in this direction. And why merge that together? It's just going to cause friction. It's better for you guys just to remain friends. However, if two people in in the yoke, if, if if you guys know, the yoke was how oxen were attached to the plow back in those days. So they would attach this yoke to the neck of one bull or cow and attach the yoke to the other neck of the bull. And so the cows would move in tandem and that's how they would be able to plow the field. Well, just imagine if they're going in different directions, it wouldn't work. They wouldn't be successful, would they? Would they? The same thing is true. The, plan, the, the plans that God has for your life, you wouldn't be able to accomplish them if you were unequally yoked and this is what's happening in that relationship. So it's super important for you to be equally yoked. 
Number three on God's rules for dating and relationships, flee from sexual immorality. We talked a little bit about that last week. We're going to talk more about it next week. But 1 Corinthians 6.14 says this, flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside the body, but whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. Now, here's, here's the thing. We want to be pure before God. We want to go before God and have the right kind of relationships. And this is an area that a lot of people can make mistakes. And we don't want to do that. We want to make sure that we, we keep this in mind from the get-go of our relationships. It should be a high priority for us to flee from sexual immorality. And that means sex before marriage. And we'll talk about that a little bit more uh, next week. But here's, here's some tips that I wanna give you guys uh, for dating. These are biblical. Number one, focus on being friends. You know what? Remember how we said last week that um, uh, relationships can get messy, especially when God is not the main relationship in a person's life? relationships can get messy too. Dating relationships can get messy too if God is not a priority. So sometimes it's better to just be friends. Focus on being friends and said. Friends get to know each other. They have each other's back and they can create great memories and enjoy a lot of things. So maybe a tip for you in dating is just to remain friends and focus on being friends, especially because you're not going to that next level that dating has, that, that, happens in relationships that God has designed for marriage, right? We're not going to go there. So maybe it's better for us to just remain friends. Well, how about this tip? Stay connected to others. You know, when couples isolate themselves, it's a lot harder to remain pure, to, to do the right thing sexually in that relationship. Because now if the focus is boom, just on the two of you, the closeness is just on the two of you. And a lot of those things are reserved, are supposed to be for marriage when we become one flesh with our husband or wife. So stay connected with others. Don't, don't stop being friends with that with your with your buddy that you've been friends with for 10 years because now you have a girlfriend. Don't don't ditch them in a sense and, and leave them leave them out and, and, and not be friends with them anymore. Stay connected to your friendship. Stay connected to your family. Stay connected to your coaches and, and your peers, even when you're in a dating relationship. Third, third tip, keep your relationship with Jesus a priority, right? We want to be involved in things that strengthen our walk with God. We want to be involved with things that help us to think about God and, and help us to do the right thing. And if you get into a dating relationship where that doesn't happen, it's super important for you to call it quits on that relationship. Or if you're interested in somebody where, where now your mind begins to steer away from God, arrest that now, stop it right now, and don't get into that relationship. Remember, the most important thing is for you to have a strong, growing relationship with God. And so if a dating relationship takes you away from that, it is causing you to sin. It is causing you to be led astray. That's what the devil wants, for you to be led astray. So you want to avoid that wholeheartedly, okay? Again, let's go back to that point that we spoke about in week number one, the, our, our big idea. Unless I'm wholeheartedly pursuing a relationship with Christ, all other relationships will be a hopeless attempt to fill that void. I know dating is something that a lot of us are interested in. Some of us are in that, in that spot. But don't let that relationship take priority over your relationship with God. Don't let that interest and excitement be more interesting and more exciting than your interest in God. That's the most important relationship that you can develop, especially at this age, the J high age, where there's so many things that are happening, so many changes that are coming to your body, to your mind, in your life, as you go through school. 
is so important for you to dive into that relationship with God. I hope that this uh, little message on dating has been a help. You see, we wanna have a God-centered focus when we go into dating. And I believe that when we honor what God says in the Bible about relationships, let me go back to those real quick and just remind you of them. Um, number one, honor and respect. Honor and respect. Number two, be equally yoked. And then number three, flee from sexual immorality. If we take God's design and we practice that in our lives, we're going to have healthy, strong relationships. And then if we take those tips, those tips that we, we, we learn and, and we use in our lives, it's going to help us to be successful in those three areas, those three boundaries, those three rules that God has about relationships. All right, I just wanna pray for you real quick. Father, we just thank you for, for everyone that's listening to this message right now, Father God, everyone that's diving into dating and wanting to do it with a heart that's focused on you, Lord. They're putting you first, and I pray that that is their highest desire, their highest goal, Father God, and that a dating relationship comes second. Help them to be able to live by the boundaries, the rules that you have set in your word about how they should have relationship, about honoring and respecting. Honoring and respecting is super important. And that is super important because we need to think about the other person first. And if we put ourselves first in that relationship, we're gonna to start to, to cross a boundary. We're gonna to start to lust rather than love, like we talked about last week. Father God, I just pray that we would get the heart of honor and respect when it comes to that relationship. If the word no is ever uttered, Lord, help us to immediately stop. Help us to sit back and think to ourselves, wait a second, am I being honorable? Am I being respectful to this other person? Lord, number two, I pray, Lord, that, that our students, Lord, our J.I. students, even as they grow older and, and really begin to date on a, on a different level, Father God, that they would seek out people that they're equally yoked with. Help them not to get to uh, think to themselves, Lord, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna save that person. I'm gonna help them become saved, Lord, and then it's gonna be okay. Well, do it, a, do it in a friendship first. Help them to realize that. Then number three, Lord, help them to realize that they need to flee from sexual immorality. That purity in the relationship is going to be a blessing that's going to keep on giving as, as, they get, as they get older and as they get into that relationship with their husband or their wife, Lord. We just thank you for anointing this time, anointing your word, Father God, and blessing our J-High students. We ask this all in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. All right, Jay High, I love you. I hope that this has been a blessing for you. And go out there and have a great relationship with the right kind of relationships, or a great week with the right kind of relationship.